Welcome to the second site bulb structured data live Q&A. Today we're going to be talking about structured data implementation in the real world. My name is Jeff Kennedy and today I've got Patrick Hathaway and special guests Nick Ranger and Tony McCreeth. Howdy, howdy. Hello everyone. Also hello. <laughs> so as with the Q&A we did last month, format today is going to be pretty informal. And to get started, I'm going to ask both of our guests to give themselves a bit of a, an introduction. So, Nick, would you like to tell everyone who you are, what you do, and what structured data is to you? Howdy, howdy. Um, really, really lovely to meet you guys and um, the Sightbulb audience. Howdy. Um, my name is Nick Ranger. I'm a technical SEO at Studio Hawk. We're the largest SEO agency in Australia. Um, and maybe beyond, but you know, uh, that's awesome. Um, and I, my primary interest, I think, is uh, you know, from just just um, technical audits. Um, I love walking through um, e commerce websites and um, kind of unpacking um, some of the more juicy, interesting um, reasons why sites um, you know, have massive crawl issues, uh, <laughs> um, to which there are many. especially for my clients is um, schema is a fantastic way to be able to show um, and present information to Google and show the relationships um, between them. Um, it's a really fantastic way of um, using um, like essentially using like what rank, rank brain does, um, which uses machine learning to determine the most relevant results to um, search engine queries. So um, schema is a really fantastic way of um, joining all the dots, dotting the I's, crossing the T's. Yeah. I think that's a good way of putting it. <laughs> Tony, how about yourself? Uh, so I'm Tony McCreeth. I probably own the smallest SEO agency in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> We've got the spectrums here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, mine's, uh, well, basically two of us working from home. Uh, uh, Brad, who works for me, is part-time. Uh, most of our work we're very niched uh, is for the big commerce platform. So small version of Shopify. And a large proportion of that is getting their structured data right. So we spend a lot of time on the e-commerce side of structured data. Uh, I'm also a Google Webmaster product expert goal thing. <laughs> uh, basically, <laughs> I, I help out a lot in the Google forums uh, for, for webmasters, for SEO. And one area I help out in is structured data. So that kind of gives me a, uh, I get to see what all the different sorts of problems people have in relation to structured data and Google, uh, which gives me a bit of an insight into, uh, yeah, uh, what we're talking about today, uh, mm -hmm. real world problems. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah. That's interesting. I think as well, a lot of the questions that we've got relate to e-commerce type stuff. So um, we've got a few lined up for you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> and Patrick, I'm sure most people should know who you are if they they know Sightbull, but let's have a quick reminder. Cool. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Patrick Hathaway, uh, co-founder of Sightbulb. Um, my main job is to write stupid things in our release notes, which is probably what you've seen. Uh, other than that, I also get involved in helping determine what features we build and how they end up working for the end user. Um, so earlier this year, we released version four uh, of the software and added in structured data extraction validation at that point. Um, so my head has firmly been in this world for the last few months since we've been sort of uh, building and developing this and you know writing documentation and all that sort of stuff. Um, I should also say we've got Simon Cox helping us out on the live chat as well. So could people say hello to him if anyone's in there. Um, so, and if you've got any questions you'd like to cover, drop them in and Simon will push them across to us. Um, we'll try and fit them in around the questions we've already got. If you can mark them with a, a cue at the start, that helps us pull them out. So let's have a look at the first of our questions now. Pull this up. So from quite a broad one from Tom here. 
to get us started. How do you decide what structured data to start with and how can I identify opportunities on client sites? Would anyone like to get started on this one? I'll happily I'll happily jump in. Um, so when you're when you know when you're looking at at a client site, um, I don't know about you, Pete, uh, Tony, but usually I, I'll start off and um, usually see already structured data that already exists there, and um, usually will do a bit of due diligence in that, um, and that will give me a, a good idea. But normally, like. Um, like if there's no structured data, like essentially, you know, what what is the what is the type of business? What is the goals? Like, um, like I like to implement um, organizational schema. I like to like um, mark up what the website is. Um, give it a really good um, um, breadcrumbs to be able to show the authority around the site, um, because that's really really important to be able to show um, a really good uh, internal link structure to really help boost that especially since um, RHEL Next and RHEL Prev <laughs> isn't um, considered by Google anymore, RIP. Uh, so, um, and if it's like an e-commerce site, you know, there's um, there's so many different types of entities that we can really mark up and show, but um, product schema, review schema, um, you know, um, local businesses having like um, uh, local business schema. Um, if it's a really blog, uh, like article heavy types, um, like, site then um, having article schema if it's you know so there's lots of different types of ones um and i think it's it really really depends on the on the on the business and what is really meaning for them to have um rich snippets be able to show in the serp yeah uh, add, adding to that uh, i'd say uh, what you should you, you should find out who the consumers of your potential structured data are so the obvious one is Google search. That's the one we know. Uh, so it's a good move to go to their uh, structured data guidelines. There's a single page that lists all the structured data they support and what benefits it has to you. So what rich results and things like that. And if you go through there and just look for what matches up with what you do. So mm -hmm. things like you'll suddenly go, ah, we sell products. Look, Google will give us a benefit if we do products. Uh, and you, you'll find stuff that are not so obvious, uh, like uh, this year FAQ page is a big one. It's not an obvious, this is what our business does, but it, when you suddenly realize, oh, I answer questions, I, I've, I've got questions and answers to give, uh, you'll realize you can mark it up. Uh, and another forgotten thing is it's not just Google. So you, you want to look at all your uh, channels, uh, to see, is there any structured data that I can do there? Uh, for example, Facebook, Pinterest, Twitter. Uh, now, uh, they typically use more simple structured data, as in meta tags, but it's still structured information that you're sending to them. Uh, so if you want those special fit Facebook features or the Twitter card, uh, you, you, you want to look at what Twitter wants and try and match up with that. And probably every industry has even other channels that uh, maybe where their structured data could be, uh, or the structured data might be really benef of benefit. Mm. Yeah. Can it's I just jump in on that as well? Actually, so is anybody? Are you? Is any either of you having any conversations about uh, speakable stuff? You know, for Alexa or Google Assistant or whatever it's called. Uh, not real world work. Uh, yeah. I know Google's still kind of playing about with how they how they want to do that and schema.org. Uh, they're definitely on the idea of that. And also the problem of if you're doing JSON-LD, you're duplicating all your content. So the speakable mm -hmm. solutions, which are kind of saying, this is where on the page you can read this out kind of thing. Uh, so they're trying to work out better solutions now, which is uh, is looking good. Oh, is that the the uh, the CSS selector? Like, here's where that content yeah. lives, right? Okay. Mm. So I, I think the only thing that supports the CSS selector at the moment is Speakable. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, they're nutting out. Uh, so the schema.org is all public, and it's Google employees and Bing employees and things. Uh, and they're all chatting about this sort of thing and uh, what direction we should go next, uh, which will help everybody. So. Uh, yeah, things mm -hmm. like the CSS selector is a good idea, but at the moment they seem a bit uh, not sure what direction to go with it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think um, 
you know, in time, that's going to come a lot into a lot more prevalence. But I think, um, you know, for businesses that have resources that are looking to, um, you know, spend with, with an SEO agency, and I say spend very loosely, um, you, you know, you know, the things that give them the most ROI, I think, are always the things that take precedence. Um, mm-hmm. So looking at um, ensuring that your product schema, your review schema, um, in, in a lot of cases, your FAQ schema, um, and if there's any anything that sort of appears in the SERP that will really help um, give, you know, take up a little bit more real estate, uh, that's that's the kind of things that I think um, have a lot more sway in a meeting than, um, you know, there's this really cool concept. Um, users aren't really up to that part yet i think <laughs> um you know just just from some studies that i've, I've seen about um speakable um you know with with um you know different siri and alexa and things like that things um users are quite um you know up to this up to the point at which it can um you know they're giving them more qualified information because i think um the technology is still very much in its infancy. Um, if you kind of like follow the money, you can see that um, you can see that they're investing a lot in this. So mm. it's still something that I think we're all talking about, we're all thinking about, but it's very much in the in the back of our minds because right now I think um, it's still very much early days, even in here in twenty twenty. Yeah. So delving down uh, a bit more specific on this same topic this is a one i know came via yourself on twitter nick from geo landon pages so they asked what do you believe is the best schema markup for services with geographically targeted landing pages so a bit of a specific example or not completely specific but a, a bit <laughs> more so. yeah i mean there's you know there's um with with service pages and things like that there is um you know you can have um you can have like um service um uh, a, a schema that will be able to show um you know what kind of um services that, that they provide and give them um really good um entity related information for that um but as far as like with geographically um important information i i just like to like you know, place on um local business schema, because I think that really just roots um, Google's understanding of, okay, um, you know, this is where they are. I can see that, um, you know, this is um, the locality at which they they serve. And that in conjunction with um, Google My Business, making sure that you're filling out all of your NAPAC information and putting um, in the proximity um, to the local area that you serve and not sort of going too far out of that um, will really, really help with your local results to be able to rank for keywords that are um, commercially meaningful for you. Yeah, and you can link the two. So uh, you can say this page is about a local business. You Mm -hmm. can say where the business is. You've got service areas. And you can also say this local business offers these services. Mm. So you you can connect all the information together. Uh, At the moment, service doesn't, well, at least with Google, doesn't offer you much. But they're obviously going to be thinking in that because in Google My Business, you can say services now. Yeah. So they're, they're mm-hmm. internally structuring that way. So at some point, I think services will be included. Uh, uh, one kind of hack is that you uh, you productize your service, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is basically you're allowed to have a thing, which is two types of thing. So you can say it's a product and a service. And so you can take benefits of the two things. So, for example, product, you can do the pricing, things like that. And so you can get merge your service in to get the benefits of uh, what products can get. Mm. Uh, uh, but, yeah, at the moment, services is a bit of a uh, sideline one. Uh, yeah. Local business uh, is also a bit fuzzy because if it's your own businesses, Google, that's self-serving and they will not reward you much on that but if you're a uh if if you're listing other people's businesses in different places then you're then you will get some reward in your local business listings Mm -hmm. yeah um we've been getting quite a few questions on the chat so i want to pull in some different ones so got one here that nick's already given a bit of a take on so i'm keen to hear your thoughts on it tony (laughs) 
<laughs> so Ralph is asking, is it worth investing time resource in implementing every item of schema applicable to your business, including obscure stuff? Uh, I'm a no on that. Uh, <laughs> I I hate looking at WordPress. <laughs> With all their, uh, uh, this menu is a menu. This footer is a footer, all that sort of stuff. <laughs> Uh, there's plenty of signals already going out on that. There's a there's a photo tag. There's a uh, navigational elements and things mm. like that. Uh, mm -hmm. And I, I don't think it's harmful, but I don't think it's really providing anything, any new information, that sort of stuff. Uh, but it can. If one thing I've seen is if you over-engineer your structured data, you can lose. Uh, so, right. All Google, Bing, uh, they've all got. Hopefully Google doesn't start talking. G word, G and Bing. Where was I? Uh, well, I've lost my train of thought. Uh, ah, yeah. Uh, so they they've got guidelines on how you should do your structured data. Mm. Now, if you go beyond them, you might go beyond what they can understand. Uh, a good example in the past is. Uh, people started to use price specification for the products. Mm -hmm. And that's because the Google Merchant Center said use price specification. But Google Search didn't know what that meant. So uh, people were overdoing it. Uh, so I'd say a word of caution on uh, if, if you are going to go mm -hmm. beyond what the specification says, try, try and stick to the specification and go deeper rather than twisting it around and things like that. And yeah, uh, so be, be cautious, careful. The again, the end goal is to give those people the information they need to mm. give you benefits. Yeah, mm. yeah. And this this fits with like some of the stuff that's come out from people like John Muller, who said, like, you don't need to tell us it's a web page. You know, we know it's a web page. You don't need to mark all of every, every little bit up. I, and, and like I think from from the Google perspective, you, you've you've obviously got to look at your required properties, and then it's exploring which of the recommended properties fit for you. And then anything beyond that, that's that's the stuff that's really like, you know, that that we're, the you you may be you may be confusing or you may be not getting any mm -hmm. benefit from whatsoever. Yeah, uh, there is something Google said to me, uh, or I've heard from them once. Uh, is they look at what people are doing and that might influence uh what they decide to support in the future in fact you, you'll see like uh, there's some nonsensical parameters in products at the moment price valid until what's that used for we don't know yet yeah. but maybe one department's mm. experimenting on it mm. uh, and they might see that people are starting well price specification they saw people using that so now they support it because they knew that a large chunk of the, the internet was giving them stuff they couldn't read. Uh, mm -hmm. So that uh, you can, uh, especially if you're Yoast, you could, if, you, if you've if you put some markup on there, so many websites have got it, there's a good chance Google will go, hey, it could be worth reading this. Mm. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot braver than than me. I think um, if I see some errors, I'm just like, well, it's they're just not, they're not going to be, um, they're not going to be considered um, in the SERP at all. So, uh... well, I think we've lost Nick there a little bit. I think um, one thing that Nick said earlier on here is um, yeah. very relevant is it's got to pay for itself. That's what a lot of this. Yeah. Mm. Sorry, Nick, we lost you there for a moment. Yeah, I'm sorry about that, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I'm in a lockdown here in Melbourne, um, both physically and um, uh, digitally. <laughs> um, but yeah, just to just to sort of maybe um, tuck one more thing on, onto uh, what Patrick and Tony said. Like, uh, I think like marking up anything that is uh, like irrelevant or, um, or or misleading, like can lend you a a, a penalty, like a manual. Um, a manual action and that's something that i think um you know as seos we don't see too often thank goodness um but when we do it's it's very very clear as to um you know 
when when we go and look at this, it's like okay, like sometimes like they're um, they're selling mistakes and they've sort of been put outside of the DOM or for whatever reason they've just been coded incorrectly. And um, Google sort of looked at this and like you know um, it doesn't make sense to me. So maybe they're trying to game um, game the system a little bit and um, be a little bit manipulative. Um, and sometimes it's just straight up manipulative. Um, you know, especially like maybe content that is um invisible to users you know google can see that um <laughs> if you have a mm. uh, text that is sort of like the same color as the background and um or you're trying to use markup um that just doesn't exist there um it, it is looking like you're trying to um trying to game the system and that will um quite potentially um lends to a manual a manual um penalty so um, you know, words, word of warning there and word to the wise, um, you know, uh, play the game correctly. Yeah. Yeah, we've all seen them before in the past. I think it's only a matter of time before we start seeing some more of the cleanups coming about with structured data. Um, next question is very hands-on one. So we've seen this come up again and again. So from Miguel, we've got asking should I create the structured data markup or leave that to client developers? So I get the impression that um, again, working as either a consultant or an agency and he's giving recommendations to a client. So should he be given the code or should he just be given guidance? So what do you do with your clients, Tony? Uh, we're the developer. <laughs> that simplifies <laughs> things a bit. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so uh, but it means we get to look at what other people, other developers have done, and we analyze, see the mistakes. Uh, there's yeah, I, I think uh, uh, the SEO the uh, should should recommend to the developer. So there's a few developers that are SEOs and developers, uh, but the SEO should kind of say this is this is what the result I want. I want. Uh, say product JSON LD, uh, and mm. you can say here are the little spots where I want you to change that to be the product name or this that the other. Uh, mm -hmm. But let the developer actually do the tech stuff; they work out how to do it. Uh, and I think that question was kind of saying, and like, do you do it by hand or not? Uh, try and automate as much as possible. Try and get the data. So the developer probably has access to the database behind the whole system. So instead of mm. going to the developer saying, can you add this to this page? And then that's that page, no. <laughs> have the developer develop a framework <laughs> that automatically, I've, <laughs> no joke, I've seen that happen. Yeah, so have the developer autom um, automatically pull the information from source. Mm. Yeah, that's the best way you can do it. If you can get it mm. directly fed through, uh, and that's so that's what we can do like uh, often CMSs will have a, a templating engine where you can access information from the the database behind the scenes uh, or if it's WordPress you can completely customize and go straight to the database yourself uh, so try and automate it as much as possible and let the developer work out those problems uh, you just you uh, say what you want <laughs> you 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 provide the result they provide the solution yeah like um, yeah. gareth keeps telling us that as well he says always tell us what you want it to achieve not how to do it yeah and um, don't give us a solution yeah. tell us what you want it to do yeah uh, how about you Nick? yeah absolutely I want review stars. i'm i'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah um i'm i'm exactly the same um i i might ask um you know you just said something about review size i might ask us to um you know if they're using any third party to want to do that um you know what it is because again um, we don't want any self-serving um platforms to kind of um you know give us the ability to be able to um contort our own reviews because that will again um lead you into some hot water with google um but yeah um, I, I, I'm exactly the same as Tony. I will, um, 
say like, look, these are these are the um, the schema types that are really um, we've identified as really important to um, the user. Um, we can see them um, when we do the keyword research. These are the kinds of comments that um, things that we see from SERP features that um, a lot of third party tools will show us a lot of really great insights. Um, and if you got the content, you know, like absolutely. Um, so I will I'll kind of like do um, a couple of mock ups. Um, based on a couple of pages and say like, you know, this is generally what um, it looks like. This is how it functions. Like, look, um, I've, t I've already tested this for you. This all validates um, really quite nicely. Um, essentially extrapolate this out across all of these different things. So mm -hmm. they've, um, they've got one, um, they've, they've got one example that works really well um, and they can sort of see and um, essentially just use exactly what um, Tony said is use the custom fields that already exist um, within um uh you know with the the the, the template of um of the sites to be able to like extrapolate this against the relevant pages yep i don't do any of that <laughs> thank goodness <laughs> <laughs> we've got a a nice question from simon in the chat that follows on from that quite well so he's mm -hmm. asking what methods have used with client sites where structured data wasn't built into the cms and techniques mm -hmm. now i know there's a lot of products um, and solutions kicking about at the moment um, and they're all relatively new given it's a new thing so mm -hmm. what have you used or have you used anything along these lines with your clients well i think tony you can um very confidently say that for big commerce um <laughs> it's kind of built in but wrong <laughs> so uh, i basically yeah. look at what they do and do better uh, I do have a, a couple of clients on custom uh, websites, and one is super custom. And so that was working a lot with the developers and, well, the developer. Uh, and it was a very custom type of structured data because they, they, they're not a shop. They're a, a franchise across Australia. So this is your multiple local pages and things like that. So it all... It all needed to be coded by hand. Uh, and like uh, Nick was saying, I, I basically gave the guy, I said, Here, here's some JSON LD, and he knows what JSON is. So he knows what JSON LD is. Mm. Can you get that to appear on every page with the information that you get from the database? And probably after about two or three takes, uh, we had it perfect. And it was very complicated mm -hmm. structured data, including. Uh, localization services they offered mm -hmm. uh, and things like that and he got it in a, a few little uh, uh, iterations and so were you That's sending like were you sending lots of the docs over or just kind of leaving uh, pretty it much, him? Uh, I gave him the JSON LD a, a example based on a real world yeah. scenario and we chatted through so i was saying like so this obviously is going to duplicate as it's going through i think developers are better than this at, at json <laughs> than we are but they know <laughs> yeah. if you're giving them an array in json and they say well these are the things just can you loop that <laughs> and you go, oh, yeah, that's, easy. <laughs> that's awesome yeah if i can um chime in for maybe some shopify and some Oh, we've lost your audio there, Nick. Yeah. No, you've gone completely. We can see you fine. You're moving. Sorry. Um, I think you? yeah, you're back. Yeah, my working connection on this computer isn't the best. So if I hit it, uh, I, I do wild gestures. <laughs> <laughs> I think the things are like, oh, gosh. Um, yeah, sorry about that, guys. Um, so if I can maybe just chime in with some um, Shopify and some WordPress um, add-ons and plugins that are really good. Shopify, my go-to is um, JSON-LD. Um, it's like a once-off thing. I think it's like two ninety nine, and that pretty much does um, a full suite of things that um, will be, um, you know, re really quite um, basic for for any 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 type of of business. Um, for WordPress. Um, you know, there's a whole gamut of ones, both free and paid. I think um, I've used, like, with the free ones, I think I've used um, uh, WPSEO 
um, structured um, data schema that's that's free um, and it has um, really great things like work organizational schema local businesses video events ratings um, you can even um, go down into a little bit more granularity with geo coordinates um, people's names and logos business descriptions um, and uh, you know, even even down to like you know working hours as well. Um, and I think for a free plugin, that's pretty awesome. Um, there's like uh, another free one that's good um, is like all in one schema um, rich snippets. Um, I think they're all pretty they're, they're all pretty good. Um, but I think I think they don't really support a lot of automation, so um, it's a little bit going going back and forth. Um, and uh, uh, the paid ones that um, I've done. Um, like I think everyone knows about Schema Schema Pro, um, you know that's it's eighty bucks a, a, a month, I think. <laughs> um, but you know you've got all kinds of reviews for music and movies, products, books. Um, you've got services, you've got recipes, um, and software applications, books, people, products. Like there's a, a massive gamut of things that Schema Pro offers. And I think um, from memory. Um, uh, the uh, WP SEO structured data one is actually made by Schema Pro, so that's like the free mm -hmm. version of, of Schema Pro, um, and also like Schema and structured data for WordPress and, and AMP. I think um, that's that's about a hundred bucks. Um, that's a once off though. Um, that's really good because it's different from Schema Pro. That's like eighty bucks a month. Um, so again, like that, that one, um, schema and structured data for WordPress and AMP, um, has like supports like 30 plus schema types. Um, yeah, <laughs> I'm trying to remember yeah. this, but yeah. Um, so they're the ones that I really like to use for, for Shopify and for, for WordPress. Yep. Yeah, I actually flashed another um, question up on the page there because we were we're tailing in to answer another questions, which is really good about <laughs> third party tools. Um, so mm. next up, I've got a question from myself because I've had this discussion with a few people recently, um, and I don't think it's a cut and dry answer. Does my structured data have to be exactly what visitors see on the page? So to give a little bit of context to this, I was speaking to someone the other day um, and they had taken a page of content which their head, they were just straightforward headings and within their structured data, they'd reworked them headings to be questions and used um, FAQ schema. Mm. So it didn't strictly match the content on the page, but it was very close. It was just they'd slightly restructured it to be a question. But the, the main thing was it didn't match up. What would be your take on that? Is this going against Google's guidelines enough to be an issue? Or is that acceptable? <laughs> I reckon that's a good one for you, I suppose Tony. Another question, um, you know. Would you consider doing it yourselves? Uh, it, it's woolly. Uh... <laughs> Uh, I was thinking of things like there are certain scenarios where you will mark up stuff that's not visible, uh, yeah. like geo coordinates, or uh, yeah. uh, maybe mm. you'll do the publisher and you have to include the name of the publisher, but you might not, might not specifically state that on the page. Uh, and I know you uh, you can slightly alter what's in the structured data. Uh, for example, make it a summary rather than the full article, that sort of thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that one's down to the consumer and their algorithms and what they decide. Uh, something like FAQ page, they're getting a lot uh, smarter on deciding if it's good, if they like it. Uh, and that might come down to a bit of comparison of, is it on the page? Is it near the top of the page? Is it... Uh, uh, and something we've seen is, is it relevant to what the person is searching for? Mm. So they're, they're not going to just blindly give you the, the, the FAQ rich snippet anymore. They're, they're doing quality checks and things like that, which might mean it might be a fuzzy logic. It might be the text in the structured data is 87% relevant mm. of what's on the page. And there might mm. be a a, a, a a machine learning algorithm that works out what that number should be. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, and like the, you know, the, the other, the, the flip side of this stuff is anything that's nothing to do with, with Google stuff. You can do whatever you want. You know, you, you don't have, to, you don't have to worry about that when you're not, when you're not worrying just about Google. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And things like a meta description, like, uh, it doesn't have to match up with the content, but uh, Google and the others will probably not use it if it's complete rubbish and gibberish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You just pull it straight from the HTML and said, none for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We do what we want. <laughs> yeah. Um, next up is a question that I couldn't avoid because it keeps coming back. So this beyond the implementation it's been implemented, it's been validated, but not getting any rich results. What can I do? I think there's a, a couple of different varieties that you can uh, of ways you could answer this. I mean, if it's live and it's and it's validated, um, you know, what is what does the SERP actually result um, you know, show you? Are there other rich um, snippets that are showing that you're wanting to basically compete with? Um, what do they look like? What is the difference between yours? Like Essentially, Google will show you um, what it um, considers to be um, acceptable. So, where, what does that benchmark look like, and um, you know how does your sort of differ from that? Um, I think, kind of like starting from there as like a base um, conceptual logic is a good is a great place to sort of ask yourself these kinds of questions. Uh, I often yeah. go through the technical testing. So, typical things to test is the rich results tester. Uh, it might say it's valid, but if it's not giving you a preview, there's a bit of a signal that it might be valid, but there's nothing it's valid for. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <and Russia. laughs> uh, another thing on the, uh, I would visually inspect your content because these tools do not mm. find everything. Uh, mm. Not that that would uh, mean it's uh, not valid for, for showing up. Uh, the next test is, do a site search on the page. So site colon, full page. If you see the rich snippet there, that means Google does think it's valid, but doesn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so you might quite often get, say, you do that, and you'll get those site-wide uh, review star things working on a site search. But if you do real-world searches, they disappear. And that's that means between... Mm-hmm being technically valid and Google approving it, it failed somewhere. So that's, mm-hmm. you've got to do a quality check on that sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, and that again could be, because uh, the validation tool doesn't check, is it matching up with the content on the page? Is it gibberish? Is, yeah, uh, yeah there, there's quite a few checks. Uh, a simple example is that quite often see an organization being the author of a review and it's kind of going, well, it's kind of technically valid that, but it's dodgy, yeah. <laughs> especially yeah. if it's the organization that owns mm. the website. <laughs> yeah. I would just add to this as well. Mm. You, you want to check to see if any of your structured data is getting loaded in through JavaScript. And if it is, how long is it actually taking for that page to render? Or, or is it working just in the validation tool because it's getting loaded in a sufficient time? But when actually Google's rendering the page, they're not getting the data. So that sort of thing is uh, always worth checking. Mm-hmm. I really like some of the stuff that Brody Clark's been putting out around this area as well on filtering, where like especially with image and things, where it's found either it might not be within Google's guidelines, but mm-hmm. if you don't have either high enough definition or a certain number of images, it's not actually triggering results. Um, so there's filters that go beyond the the core recommendations. Yeah. Uh, on the JavaScript, I had a, an interesting problem uh, related to that. Was that uh, the real Google bot? Uh, its timings are different to the uh, testing tools because the testing tools loads in all the pages and things like mm-hmm. that. Uh, what I was getting was it wasn't working with Google bot because the JavaScript was running in a different order. So I was trying to get hold of someone else's JavaScript. So you got these review widgets, and I was trying to fix a review widget. But with the real Google bot, my code was trying to do it before their code was added. 
But if you looked at it in a browser, it was fine. If you looked at it in the testing tools, it was fine. It was just in Google Box. Timings were different. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's just that's one of the more weird problems you get with JavaScript involved. Yep. Mm. Yeah. Lots of potential things to trip you up there. <laughs> um, oh, absolutely. Yeah. So this one goes beyond the implementation and appearance. So very specific mm -hmm. one here from Moret. So what should I do with schema if it's no longer relevant? So give the example of job posting that's not longer available or out of stock products. Um, mm -hmm. Should you use products so that Google understands that they are out of stock or expired? Mm -hmm. And is there a benefit to that? Yeah, awesome. I follow Maret on Twitter, so hello. <laughs> um, Tony, do you want to take the job posting and I'll take um, the out of stock schema? Uh, yeah. Um, mine's a bit of a general answer on this is I'd follow what your your plan for the website is. Mm -hmm. uh, so for, say, a job posting, you're not going to leave uh, a it there forever. So if you're leaving it there, leave the structured data there. Make sure the structured data is clear on, on saying this posting is, is gone. I think you can do that. Uh, not available. Uh, and, but yeah, don't specifically worry about the structured data. Just remove the job after a period of time, and that'll solve uh, your problem. And similar thing with a product. You don't get rid of the product, or maybe mm. you do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a it's a really really good point. I think um, when it comes to out of out of stock, um, it's a really interesting conversation to have with um, you know um, e-commerce um, marketing managers around this because I think um, while it's it's great to be able to say like um, you know it's it's out of stock. Um, you know, or, or it's 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 sold out. Um, when it's out of stock, then it's sort of like, well, why would you want to even click through to that um, in the first place? When um, maybe they might want to be able to click through, like realize, like, oh, it's um, it's out of stock or it's sold out. But they might have underneath it a product carousel that shows um, related products that um, maybe uh, they really are in love with the brand. Um, so there, there's some brand loyalty there, and they want to like click through and, and do things like that. So um, you know when when you've got this there's all kinds of there's um i i think there's like what like four different types of schema that you can do for um you know for availability property in the product office schema so there's like in stock there's in store only there's out of stock and sold out so i think um you know these things will come up in the SERP, um like next to the price so like maybe it might be like um three hundred dollars and it might say like in stock or it might say um, out of stock sold out. So I think, um, again, really finding out um, from what they're wanting to display and um, some creative approaches as to, um, you know, how they can um, get around this issue um, might be a really good conversation to have with them. Because I think, um, you know, um, you can automate flipping from in stock to out of stock, but, um, you know, it's essentially in real time, um, Google has to still crawl and update that information. Sometimes it takes time and it can be um, in, in the case of um, one of my clients, um, it was uh, still showing, um, well, this is a different issue, but just to sort of say like, you know, um, issues with automation and um, crawling and indexing um, like with different variants, um, it showed like there was still a sale price and they felt like, oh man, we have to honor the sale price still mm. uh, because that's what um, people had literally mm. um, wrote into them and copied it in from, from um, uh, they, they basically screenshot it from the SERP and then sent it to them. And they said like, this is the price that it says here. Um, we uh, we went to the the, um, the web page and it's got a different price. Um, you should honor the price that um, appeared in the SERP, um, <laughs> which is a very unique mm. issue. But I think really highlights what, um, I, I guess like the political game that you can also play with um, with out of stock. So I think um, again, it's one really important to have um, a conversation with them as to what they can do. Um, 
but essentially, um, I think the key is to really continue to give value to um, to visitors and really make sure that um, they're not having like that um, that UX problem of um, the disparity of what <laughs> ultimately they're wanting to to, to show up. I'm actually noting down every website that has price valid valid until 2099. <laughs> so in 2099, I can say, sell it to me at that price. <laughs> I, I, I bet there's an opportunity to scrape all of them and um, provide a service. Mm. You know, way yeah. back machine. <laughs> yeah. Way back price machine. <laughs> yeah. I know what um, um, Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, no, uh, keep going. Yeah, I, I, I don't know what um your your tact is, um, uh, Tony, but sometimes like um you know filters um offer a really great solution, um at least like when when someone's searching natively, you know if they can just filter them out, they'll like filter out the those kinds of options and things like that. Um, but yeah, <laughs> you might want to like either deprioritize like out of stock products or um. You know, just let them let them like interchange from that. Yeah, and that's yeah. definitely making your website more usable. Uh, mm. Don't have someone seeing a page, a category page where the first ten products are out of stock. Put them mm. at the bottom. And yeah. Another interesting area is uh, Google Webmasters. No, no, sorry, uh, Google uh, Merchant Center mm. is is starting to get more in line with the rest. Like it's, they've announced that thing about that you can use their feed to go into search. Mm -hmm. And this means that uh, the, the technology is getting there to hopefully in the long term, they'll be solving that problem of the big delay between something going uh, out of stock and in stock and Google mm -hmm. showing out of date information. Because uh, you've got more ways to tell Google, this is the information. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I've started to notice if you lie with your out of stock, the merchant center will tell you. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I've, I've just had that on a variant page because mm. the technology was wrong and he was saying it was in stock when it was out of stock, but the feed was saying out of stock. Mm. And another one is if you lie about your shipping prices, <laughs> Google Merchant Center has a secret shopper and it goes in there to find out how much shipping is for a certain suburb and they will tell you. So wow. they, uh, and shipping is a new thing for structured data that yeah. Google's just brought out. Mm. Uh, yeah. So uh, it's, I think a lot of people will be scrambling to make sure that that information is correct because in the past you've got away with getting it slightly wrong here and there. Mm. Now you're going to get warnings and maybe banned from the merchant center. Yeah. I think it's, um, you know, now that they've made organic shopping um, listings, available it's going to be really interesting to see how that how that um you know goes over time um i don't know about you you guys but like i i i find i think um with people being able to purchase from the SERP, um that's going to take away from um maybe like click through to sites and um you know with this um hullabaloo um with um news publishers Tune in next week. <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're very quickly running out of time, so I've got one sorry. quick one from... Oh, sorry. Oh, you're back there, Nick? Yeah, I'm back. I'm, yeah, oh. I was just waffling on about um, organic shopping and, and my, my theory about it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Stay on topic. <laughs> Um, so we're actually running out of time, unfortunately. It seems to have flown by. So I'm mm. going to have one very quick one to both of you from the chat before I tie up. Um, so schema is constantly evolving. How do you keep up to date with what's available? What do you use? So, uh. Tony, <laughs> where do you go mm. for your structured data and use? Uh, oh. I guess I'm a bit deeper than the average Joe, so I'm in groups. Uh, uh, even I'm in the GitHub for schema.org, things like that. Uh, so I've kind of evolved. I, I listen to the people who invent schema. In fact, I'm learning about ontologies at the moment, which is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the, the roots you end up in. Uh, uh, so keeping up, I guess, 
Uh, I'm not sure what the, how the average Joe would do that. Uh, keep an eye on the uh, uh, Google does announcements with its blog and uh, with their Twitter account. The uh, is it called Google Webmaster? Something like that. Uh, so that can be a good source of early stuff. Uh, yeah, they've, they've started since March. They've started publishing um, anything oh, yeah. that they've changed. On, there's like a releases page mm. um, that they publish all this stuff on. So even if you're not necessarily on it straight away, that's a good way. Periodically checking in on that will, will allow you to at least see which things that they've added or, or changed that um, is important to them. Yeah, I've set up a notification on that page for when yeah. it changes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, that's a that's um that's really really good advice for people out there. For me, I think it's um my um my uh, my friends um who are um, all SEO nerds. Um, we pretty much talk SEO every week. <laughs> um, um, or Twitter, like Twitter is for me um where I get all the real time information or the juicy things as they happen. Um, and that's that's what um I'll look at. And also just like going through and just testing and seeing um, what changes and seeing like oh, um you know these are these are errors that I'm seeing. Um, I might test different tools. So testing Cypol. Um, testing um, classy schema <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, and you know schema um, dot dev and like all kinds of other wonderful things that people have made um, just because I like to and it's fun um, and that teaches me a lot but yeah that webmaster blog um, as it changes is um, really the best place because um, it's coming from the source yeah. actually a good point is register with Google search console because mm. Yeah, they're mm. constantly inventing new alerts. Uh, mm. uh, yeah, we get tons of them. Uh, but, <laughs> they'll, the they'll, but they'll validate something new, and we'll get a a uh, hundred emails from all our clients, and then they'll contact us, going, "How come you don't support this?" And we go, "They've only just invented it." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, check your enhancement reports in your messages. <laughs> and don't bother Tony too much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we may in the, the short future have something to help with them um, keeping up to date with some of this stuff as well. Hopefully. <laughs> I'll awesome. not say too much, Patrick. Watch this space. <laughs> yeah. So um we have run out of time now. So thank you to everyone for watching us. Thanks to Simon moderating the chat. And um, there's been a lot going on in there. And apologies for the questions we haven't managed to get to. Uh, I'm going to try and put some stuff out through Twitter um, to respond mm. to them questions. Special thank you to Tony and Nick um, for joining us. It's been great. We could have talked about this stuff forever. Um, now, to finish up, could I ask each of you to give everyone uh, one last tip for structured data implementation in the real world? And if you could also let people know where they can follow you or keep up to date with what you're doing. Mm. Nick, would you like to go first? Yeah, absolutely. I think um, at the moment I'm just kind of like, um, I would usually say knee deep, but um, at the moment it's more neck deep. Um, in site migrations and um, people, um, your breadcrumb schema is one of um, one of the most important schemas. Um, in Poor time in there. Yeah, can we skip to you, Tony? And maybe come back. To <laughs> no, we'll, we'll come back. To the am I am I back on? <laughs> oh, you're back on. Yeah. <laughs> ah, um, breadcrumbs important. Great for crawling. Please do it, especially if you're launching sites. Um, my name is Nick Ranger. You can find me on Twitter, Nick Ranger SEO, or on LinkedIn or at um, StudioHawk, studiohawk.com.au forward slash star forward slash Nick. Boom. Awesome. Right. Thank you, Nick. Nick. Uh, I think my tip would be to test what you're doing, what you've got. And that doesn't mean running it through a testing tool and getting green visually inspect it because these tools do not pick up a lot of stuff mm. uh, and especially with the errors and warnings that you get from a lot of the tools don't just think it's a problem and go to your developer saying fix that have a look and see if it is actually a problem for you uh, mm. the classic one is 
getting a uh, warning that you don't your product has no reviews if your product has no reviews that's not a problem <laughs> <laughs> So uh, basically, we should look through because quite often we see stuff that uh, passes the testing tools, and it's all it's gibberish. It's wrong. Uh, I'm Tony McCreeth. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Jump there somewhere. There we are. There uh, that's my Twitter. Uh, and yeah, if you want to ask questions there, or you'll find me in the uh, Google Webmaster Community yeah. Group helping out people with structured data there as well. Mm. And I can vouch for Tony. He's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet. <laughs> yeah, that one yeah. Actually, <laughs> while we're here, Tony, thank you for your help with that, with the structured data stuff that you you helped us with for Cyborg oh, because no that was very, very much yeah. appreciated. Cheers. And uh, uh, your response to that was great uh, because if your tool can get better at doing what I need, that's great. <laughs> Uh, and it's a big like uh, tools like uh, yours that uh, can do whole site crawls and audits mm. of structured data uh, are a big advantage. Yeah, selling it for us. Yeah, sign up to Sitebulb. <laughs> <laughs> no, thank you, you very much. Classy <laughs> schema. <laughs> yeah, that's a classy schema. We didn't mention that much, but go um, and check it out. The website, yeah. So thank you again very much, Tony and Nick, for joining us. Um, and thank you for everyone for watching. Please subscribe to the YouTube channel for more of these. We're hoping to keep them rolling because they're going well, we thought. Um, and have a look at Sitebulb for some of the structured data features, as sold by Tony there. <laughs> thank you very thank much, you everyone. Very much. Thanks, um, thanks we'll so much, guys. Next one. Bye. Bye.